I've been measuring the performance of some of these fans with an anemometer, but that only gives me one wind speed reading. Ideally, I would take a series of readings to get a pattern of the wind distribution. And my anemometer is hooked up to the computer, but rather than trying to move that side to side, it's actually much easier to just have the fan swivel side to side. This is on a uh, platform that's rotated by a stepper motor. So it takes a reading, moves the fan, waits a bit, takes another reading, moves the fan, and on and on. And there it's got a uh, wind cross section for this fan. And I've run this test with the Drio, the Dyson, the Honeywell, and some of the regular propeller type fans. And here's my results from that. Uh, the black lines at the very top, that is the Drio. This is at max, that's level 12, level 10, and level 8. And then just down from that is the Dyson with the uh, filter removed because it's also an air purifier. If I put the filter in, it's quite a bit further down, so that filter slows it down quite a bit. And then the blue line is the Honeywell tower fan, and the white lines are various propeller fans, and those have uh, quite a bit wider wind distribution. And the further I get from the fan, the wider the airstream actually becomes. Of course, it also becomes slower because it just mixes with more surrounding air. As the air from the fan moves, it mixes with air that's here already, and that moves more air along, pulling in more air from the side. So as you go from here to here, you might have 10 times as much air moving, but at one tenth the speed because of conservation of momentum. So you end up with a sort of an air multiplier effect, and that happens with any fan, not just the Dyson. So on the Dyson, you have a small amount of air that comes out of these gaps here, and that mixes with all the other air, moving a lot more air. There's nothing special about the shape of this. Uh, this happens with pretty much any fan. I'll demonstrate with my air compressor blowgun. It actually takes quite a while to fill this garbage bag from the air compressor. Now let's try blowing some air at a distance. I'd say that was about 50 times faster. But getting back to measuring the fans, I've really only measured the horizontal distribution of the wind but of course that can vary with height. I really should be taking a series of scans at different height to get a XY wind distribution. But with each scan taking 10 minutes, that's just getting too slow. But what ultimately determines how much air I can get moving with all that air mixing is how much of a push the fan gave to the air initially. And that is just a thrust from the fan. So a much more useful measure of fan performance is just simply thrust. So here's my fan thrust measuring platform. And uh, this platform essentially can rock back and forth with no friction. And I started out by measuring how much it pushed back by putting a scale right about here. But uh, using that scale like that is really awkward. So I've come up with this thing here where I've got this lever that is attached to my swing arms. And that essentially applies the same amount of force down instead of back. And that starts out pushing against it a little bit. Just gotta wait for it to stabilize and zero it. And now turn on the fan. And there's my thrust measurement. And it didn't take very long to take measurements for all 12 power levels of this Drio fan. Next up, the Dyson. So, maximum thrust of the Drio is 132 grams, Dyson is 40 grams, so I have to turn the Drio down to about level 4 to be the same as the Dyson at full power. But the Dyson is also an air purifier, so let's take out the filters to see how it does just as a fan. Well, that's a fair bit better, but it's also quite loud. So this is a bit of a surprise. This little desk fan at its lowest setting produces 69 grams of thrust, whereas the Dyson at its maximum setting with the filters removed made just 62 grams of thrust. And because the setup is fairly fast, I've been testing all of my fans. And also thinking about the relatively low thrust of the Dyson, I thought, well, let's measure the thrust of the air cleaner from Drio, which isn't really meant to be a fan, but it blows pretty hard. And we're getting 37 grams of thrust, which is to say, this thing is almost as good a fan as the Dyson is as a fan, and it's not even supposed to be a fan. And here's my results. Uh, these ones are regular cheap fans, just three levels. This one here is the box fan with the most amount of thrust, and the rest of them vary quite a lot. And then down here we have the tower fans, 
The Drio is the only one of the tar fans I tested that can keep up with the propeller type fans. Blue is the Honeywell, it doesn't go that high, and then way at the bottom is the Dyson fan. Now what the Dyson can do also is go very very low, much lower than the other fans. And here's all my fans sorted in terms of performance by thrust. Highest is the box fan, but it's kind of loud. Then this one at 143, followed by the Drio at 132 grams. And Drio is actually sponsoring this video too. The Drio is tied by this relatively small desk fan, which has relatively high pitch on the blades. And then this is my weakest propeller fan, even though it's relatively large. And that's because the blades have relatively low pitch. And making this one stronger wouldn't be just a matter of changing the blade because it probably only has a motor that's powerful enough for that blade. Then we have the Honeywell at 52 grams and the Dyson at just 40 grams with the filters in. Now it's almost comical at how weak the Dyson is at making wind because it's a fan. Isn't that what it's supposed to do? But it also has all kinds of air quality monitoring functions built in and it's also an air purifier. Plus it connects to your Wi-Fi, so it's a lot more than that. Just not a great windmaker. But the Dyson is also the one that is able to produce the lowest thrust, followed by these two. Generally the cheap propeller fans, even setting one, produces quite a bit of wind, which can be too much if you just need a bit of breeze while you're using your computer. So this is my tower fans at their lowest settings. And you can see the uh, Drio's lowest setting is actually a bit higher than the Honeywell or the Dyson. And again, that is a useful feature because when using, say, one of these fans, just while I'm just sitting down doing something, I usually end up aiming it away from me because it gets too cool very quickly. Whereas one of these fans, I can have it close to me and just blowing wind at me. So if somebody else doesn't want wind, a tower fan that goes really low is actually quite useful. And of course, the uh, 12 power settings of the Drio help with that a lot. And these two, just by not being that strong, are also very good at producing low drafts. And at their lowest settings, these are all fairly quiet. Although this one, using an induction motor, it makes a bit of a rumble. The Drio uses a brushless DC motor, which is very efficient at any speed. It uses only 3 watts at its lowest speed. And 28 watts at maximum speed. The Drio also has this mode where it cycles through different speeds on its own, uh, which kind of approximates more like a natural wind, which is a little bit more gusty. And of course, it also has an oscillating mode, and you can actually select how far it's going to swivel back and forth, which is a cool feature. None of these other fans have that. And Drio is sponsoring this video, which is why I'm telling you about all these features it has. And it also has a timer function where you can set how many hours it's supposed to run. And there's a promotion on for the Drio fan on Amazon right now till the end of the month. See links below and in the description. Still costs more than a conventional fan, so if your goal is to move a lot of air cheaply, just go with a propeller type fan.